Hi, I'm Reverend Kala Oshu, and I'm glad to be with you again. And I'm glad that you want to invest more of your time with us. In this session, we're looking at the mentoring program. What have we done so far? We have laid the foundation of who we are in Christ. We have laid the foundation of why Jesus came. We've also laid a foundation on stewardship as a principle for life management, that there are principles that govern how we steward what God has given us. And like I said in the last edition, I said, everything you've got was given to you by God. That principle of understanding alone, just understanding that principle alone will deliver you from pride, deliver you from selfishness, deliver you from the things that have derailed many men around the world today, thinking that what they have, they earned it by their own strength. No, foundationally, Every good and perfect gift comes from God, and that will deliver you. So today we're looking at the mentoring program, and you could, as you can tell from what you're seeing, I have a library of books on personal success, development, leadership development, uh, goal setting, time management. I, I cannot begin to tell you how many books I have read and, and interacted with, and I am still interacting with some of the authors, and, and, and it's an endless thing. So the first thing you must understand is this, your personal development should be a lifelong commitment. It's not something you say I've developed in this area and now no, no. Because the more you know, the more you know how much you don't know. And the more you don't know, the more you need to know. And the more you know, the more it becomes part and parcel of your knowing. So this is not something you want to learn and say I now have mastered it. No, this is something you want to keep learning. And so here I'm just going to give you the general picture of it. I start with, I call it mentoring program. And the first word here is vision. Your personal vision should encompass your talents, your gifts, and the discovery, development, and deployment of your gifts to meet the needs of others and fulfill your God-given dreams. Two things right there. Number one, you must, it encompasses what you've got. So you must know what you've got. Number two, it must encompass your desire to meet the needs of others. And number three, to fulfill your God-given dreams. Now, dreams, uh, that's one word that most of the personal development success books use. What's your dream? What's your vision? What, what do you want to accomplish? Where do you want to be in the next five years? Where do you want to be in the next 10 years? Now, uh, uh, you know, Africans don't normally plan for too long because they're not too sure how long they'll leave, I suppose, or something. But I want you to know that, you know, it's an element of faith. That's why I'm so glad I'm a Christian. It's an element of faith to even plan for the future. Because I believe that there is a future. That's why I'm planning for it. If I don't believe that there's a future, why should I plan? So that's why I am so glad to bring personal development, leadership and success principles on the platform of the word of God, because I believe that is what is missing in many others. I read all kinds of books. I read different ones and I can tell the limits upon which I, I take and what they say. Because when you become your own God, when you determine your own destiny, then, you know, I think something's wrong. I think God has a destiny for me and I need to participate with him to fulfill it. But that doesn't stop me from learning the skills that you have. So the first vision, some of you might say, well, I don't have a vision. I don't have a dream. It's not true. Everyone's got something. You just haven't discovered it. You have a dream. Every time, you, every time you look at the mirror and you have to adjust, that means you have an internal image of what you were meant to look like. And that mirror is not exactly telling you that. So you adjust externally to confirm your inner image of who you think you are. And that's the same principle of vision. There is a vision. Vision is simply the possibilities that lie ahead of us. So vision is important. We can talk about vision for a long time. But the other thing is personal development. Self-awareness should precede personal development programs. In other words, you should know yourself. How do you know yourself? By examining things around you, by examining your response to certain things, by examining how you relate and react to things around you. You will get an idea of who you are, what is inside you. Some of you don't know how much fear you've got. Fear of the failure, fear of the future, fear of, of being rejected. Those are fears that you never will know until you decide that you're going to discover them. How do you discover them? By certain certain goals and seeing your response to them. So, oh, I didn't know I had so much fear. So personal development is self-awareness is, is that it, it starts when self-awareness preceding personal development programs that lets you know if you're unaware, for instance, of your temperament, your uh, the effect of your nurture and environment on your choices and lifestyle, you may not really appreciate the need to set clear goals adapted to suit your 
individual makeup or develop life and time management habits that are peculiar to your aspirations. Now, what am I saying here? I, I want you to be careful to understand that I'm saying personal development. Now, there are books that talk about business development. There are books that talk about organizational development. No, I'm talking about personal development. The principles are similar, but the personal development is that you should have a personal vision. You should seek your personal goal, be self-aware, and know that you need to develop life and time management habits you need to develop peculiar uh, 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 goal setting skills to help your own personal aspirations for instance if i know i'm lazy i should set a goal to keep me not being lazy <laughs> if i know i i'm careless i should determine what to do with myself so that my carelessness will not become very very dangerous to my future that's what i call personal development then we have relationships. The ability to cultivate healthy relationships and create a nurturing environment where people can be helped and encouraged to grow and develop their potential. That in itself is a leadership skill. But we call it relationship now. The ability to nurture, you need to learn. You need to develop it. You need to cultivate it. What about attitude? This is your a function of your thoughts and expectations and actions. Wrong thoughts produce wrong actions and these lead to wrong results. So we need to predetermine, to predetermine our anticipated outcomes and generate the right attitudes. <laughs> the basic areas where we need to develop can be classified into the following. Goal setting, huge. Time management, powerful. Communication, leadership development, uh, etc. Understanding how to collaborate with others to build team because the team makes the dream work. So teamwork is also a skill to be developed. One book I read says the, the wheel of life, that there are seven categories which we can see to begin to apply ourselves to, namely physical, family, mental, financial, spiritual, career, and personal. We can face these categories individually and first of all, have an assessment of where we are in them, grading ourselves from one to zero, 10 being the best, one being the least. Physical, how can, how, we can look at our appearance, do we have regular checkup? What's our energy level? Muscles are they toned? Regular fitness program, weight control, diet, nutrition, stress control, endurance, and strength in others. Spiritual, our belief in God, inner peace, influence on others. Uh, spouse relationship, church involvement, sense of purpose, attitude for giving donations, prayer, Bible study, and others. Mental, attitude. Intelligence, formal education, continuing education, and training creative imagination, inspirational reading or CD education, inquisitive mind, self-image, enthusiasm, all of these are around our mental development. What about family? Listening, good role model, principled but flexible, forgiving attitude, building self-esteem of others, express love and respect, meals together, family relationships, dealing with disagreements, time together, and etc. And we can talk about each of these things one after the other. But let's look at some steps to goal setting just for the sake of our discussion today. If you don't mind, let me just have a sip of water. Thank you very much. And uh, last time we were looking at it, I still have some things here that would help you. Today we're looking at goal setting. What are the seven steps to goal setting? Number one, identify the goal. What do you want to achieve? He said, but is that not left to God to help me achieve something? <laughs> no. No. What God does is to tell you what he wants you to do. You are to decide what you're going to do. If you decide to obey God, you set it as a goal. Number two, list the benefits. In other words, what's your motivation? What's in it for me? What's in it for me? Because that's the why of the goal. You know, some people think it's only important to have a, a goal. What's the why? What? What's motivating this goal? Number three, list the obstacles to overcome. You can ask a friend who knows you well to help you in this one. Number four, list the skills and knowledge required. You see, we're talking about personal development here. We're not talking about your company. We're not talking about your business, just you. Number four, number five, identify people and groups to work with. Sometimes you need accountability groups. Number six, develop a plan of action. Number seven, set a deadline for achievement. Now, what you need to understand, we've just gone through seven steps of goal setting in the simplest way. Well, I'm going to try to keep it as simple as possible because each uh, subject matter, like goal setting, time management, they, are, they can be well developed. I mean, 
uh, seven habits of highly effective people will tell you things in a different perspective sometimes but they all lead down to the same thing that you should have your own sense of value or sense of achievement a sense of time management it is something you got to adopt adapt for yourself it's not just something that they said you should do so any approach we give it right now it's up to you to develop within yourself how you're going to handle it so this is one thought about goal setting that will help you goal setting is about becoming now that's the profound statement because a lot of times people think goal setting is about achieving no it is primarily about becoming it is what you become to accomplish your goals that is the key in setting them what you become in other words if, for instance, I set a goal to make one million pounds or one million dollars, depending on where you are, the question is not only how I achieve or how I get the one million. The question is what do I need to become to get the one million? And that's where the personal thing comes in. It is the becoming. Why? Because God has ordained that your participation will be involved in what you become. So let's take somebody who has no goal, doesn't learn time management, has nothing to do with leadership development, just lives his life the way he wants. He will still become something. Think about it. He'll become more and more useless, more and more lazy, more and more lo losing focus, more and more achieving nothing, more and more of something he will still become. At the end of his life, he might be the most useless person that ever existed on the surface of the earth. And he has become something by doing nothing. So if you do something, you are gonna become something. So I just wanted to say that to us, that because if I wanna go into time management, for instance, I have a book here, I wanna advertise the author, but it says natural laws of successful life and time management. I mean, these are profound materials. I've had this now for a couple of years, and I'll tell you, just in a nutshell what it says. It says, number one, you control your life by controlling your time. Your governing values are the foundation of personal fulfillment. In other words, if you don't have governing values, if you first sit down and say, what are the values I have for my life? Like if you're a Christian, you respect God's word, you fear God and things like that. Those governing values become the foundation for personal fulfillment. Number three, your daily activities reflect your governing values. When your daily activities reflect your governing values, you experience inner peace. To reach any significant goal, you must leave your comfort zone. We'll be talking more about this later, by the way. Daily planning leverages time through increased focus. So when you plan your day, before your day starts, because it's better to plan the night before, then you will have you will leverage time and your focus will be increased because you are clear-minded. To manage your life, that is managing time. To manage your life, your behavior is a reflection of what you truly believe. You satisfy needs when your beliefs are in line with reality. Negative behaviors are overcome by changing incorrect beliefs. Your self-esteem must ultimately come from within. Give more and you will have more. Now that's just one of the materials we're going to use to develop our life and time management when we're ready for that. But today we're just introducing the subject. What about goal setting? Like I read in our previous one, number one, secrets to attain your dreams. Number one, write it down. Number two, align your goals. In other words, when your goals do not align with one another then something is wrong align your goals this is talking about business business uh, success though number three set performance goals to reach your outcome goals number four embrace failure number five stop snowballing and number six create the eve then plans and number seven make goal setting and achieving a way of life now setting and achieving goals isn't something you do from time to time or on new year's eve it's a mindset it's a way of living your life. It's something inside that pushes you to be your best self. The truth is, if you don't make goal setting a way of life, none of the previous secrets will produce the results you want. You can't make goal setting a part of your success DNA without diligently applying the previous secrets that work hand in hand over time to transform you from someone that just sets goals to someone that achieves them. Is that not good news? So I just want to encourage you that these are the things we're going to be talking about in the course of our mentoring goal setting, time management, and things like that. And I want you to feel free, email us, uh, go to the website, take advantage of products that we have there. But let us know what areas you need help. Because sometimes when you do ask those questions, you help us focus more on those areas to help you. We're going to raise a team around the world by the grace of God that would help people in different parts of the world to 
answer specific questions but for now we're doing it in a general way so that if you send in your questions we can give you answers either by email or by future recordings and we're trusting god that a lot of people will catch up with this principle of personal development and success in god in god that's the major part because we want people to succeed in god not just succeed we want them to succeed in god because when i read joshua 1 8 I see personal development there. This book of the Lord shall not depart of your mind. You meditate there and there, and that thou mayest observe to do work on all this region. You will make your way prosperous and you will have good success. So we're interested in you having good success, not just having success. So until I come your way next time, let's just bow down and pray. Father, thank you for every listener. Thank you for what we've been able to share today. I pray that you will use what we share today to encourage, develop, and strengthen each person, to empower them to be all that God wants them to be. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen.